All right, next, let's look at the pathway of the blood flow. So the heart is a double pump, right? We talk about the right side and the left side. So each side is a pump. Uh, and really, when you think about it, it's each ventricle that serves as the pump, right? So the right side is related to the pulmonary circuit because uh, if you remember, the right ventricle is going to pump blood toward the lungs, right, to get gas exchange. And the left side is related to the systemic circuit because the left ventricle will pump blood into the aorta and aorta is going to bring the blood to all over your body, right? So that the cells can take oxygen in the, the oxygenated blood. We are going to look at this diagram and follow the blood pathway. Before uh, I start, I just want to point out again, the, the blue color indicates this is deoxygenated blood, right? Which is the bad blood that has very little oxygen. And then the red color indicates that's the good blood that has a higher level of oxygen, right? Higher level of oxygen. So that's a different color. All right, now let's follow the uh, pulmonary circuit first. So again, the goal for the pulmonary circuit is to pump blood to the lungs to get oxygenated and then return that blood back to the heart. So we're going to start on the right side. We have superior vena cava and inferior vena cava that send in the bad blood to the right atrium, right? So we're going to start right here, start with a right atrium that contains the bad blood. Right atrium sends blood to the right ventricle, the right ventricle, which is the pump, pumps blood into the pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary arteries take blood into the lungs, right? And there is a gas exchange. And after the lungs, the blood becomes oxygenated, which you can see the color is switched to red, right? So the uh, oxygenated blood now goes back to the heart through the pulmonary veins, right? So there are four pulmonary veins. And the pulmonary veins will deliver blood back to the left atrium, right? Remember the atria, atria is plural, atrium is singular. So the two atria, the, the two uh, superior smaller chambers, they're, re they're receiving chambers. So the uh, right atrium, will receive blood from superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. And the left atrium will receive a blood from the pulmonary veins, okay? Now, once the blood enters the uh, left atrium, then that concludes the pulmonary circuit, okay? So it really starts from here and, and back to the atrium on the other side. So that's it, that's the pulmonary circuit. Now let's look at the systemic circuit. So for the systemic circuit, we are going to start from the left ventricle. Now remember the left atrium has oxygenated blood, good blood. Good blood flows to the left ventricle right here. Now the left ventricle is the second pump and it's a stronger pump. And that's because it pumps blood throughout the entire body, not just lungs, right? The lungs are very close to the heart, so it's not too hard to uh, pump blood to the lungs. But when you look at your entire body, think about how far your feet are from your heart, right? Left ventricle really, really has to work much, much harder. So the left ventricle is usually bigger than the right ventricle and the wall is also thicker, right? You need more cardiac muscle to pump, to contract, to pump blood. All right, now we're starting the systemic circuit. So we're gonna start from the left ventricle. The left ventricle is going to pump the good blood into the aorta, right? Aorta right here. And the aorta will eventually split into smaller uh, arteries and then even smaller arterioles that will go uh, to your tissues. Uh, and through the tissues, you have capillaries, which are even smaller. So those blood vessels will deliver the oxygenated blood to tissues and cells. Uh, don't worry about this part. It just kind of shows you that uh, the branches of the aorta uh, that will go into some of the major organs. Okay. Now, after 
the blood that goes through you know all these organs and all these tissues now the um, oxygen is picked up by cells right and then the cells dumps carbon dioxide so oxygen is picked up by the cells but the cells also dumps carbon dioxide so after blood going through the tissues the organs now they come out deoxygenated right so now they are the bad blood so you can see it now it changes to the blue color so the bad blood will be returned to the heart by veins right smaller veins and then bigger veins and eventually the two very big veins superior vena cava and inferior vena cava right so these two veins are the two veins that are connected to the right atrium and they will bring deoxygenated blood from the upper body the lower body back to the right atrium that's it that concludes the systemic circuit okay. so again this top half that's the pulmonary circuit and this bottom half that's the systemic circuit i do want to add one more piece of information i'm gonna uh, insert the blood vessel information into this pathway okay so when blood goes from the right atrium to the left sorry to the uh, right ventricle there is tricuspid valve there right tricuspid valve so i want to put that in there and when the ventricle pumps blood into the pulmonary arteries there is another valve in place to prevent blood backflow right so in between these two in, uh, in between these two structures you have the pulmonary valve okay same thing for the systemic circuit in between the left atrium and left ventricle right here you have the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve and in between the left ventricle and arteries so we're going to be more specific the left ventricle is going to pump blood to a water first right a water branches off to different arteries so in between that you have a wardic valve all right so that's it next i just want to spend a little bit of time on the coronary circuit so coronary refers to the heart so this is the pathway where the oxygenated blood the good blood will go to the tissues of the heart so that the cardiac muscle cells and some of the other types of cells can pick up the oxygen right and then get rid of the carbon dioxide and then the deoxygenated blood will leave the uh, cardiac tissues and cells and return back to the right atrium remember right atrium is the chamber that receives the deoxygenated blood receives deoxygenated blood from the entire body right so this is basically a little circuit for the heart right to get oxygenated blood to have a gas exchange at the tissues and then for the deoxygenated blood to return just like the blood from other parts of the body return to the right atrium all right now a um, couple things coronary arteries are going to bring the oxygenated blood to the heart muscle coronary veins will drain the deoxygenated blood back to the right atrium when you look at this uh, diagram um, i'm gonna kind of circle the important uh, arteries and mostly the arteries because these arteries supply the good blood to the heart muscle right if one of these arteries is blocked then the person may experience a heart attack all right now you can see there's going to be a right side and a left side right in the right side you have the right coronary artery and on the left side you have the left coronary artery now those are the two main arteries they branch off the aorta remember the aorta is right here so it's going to kind of branch off a little bit and it's going to form um, the right and then the left coronary arteries so i made a chart right here so you can see after aorta you have these two branches so those are the two main branches that will further branch off to smaller arteries now i'm gonna kind of skip the right side 
because most of the times the problem happens on the left side. Now, when you look at the left side, the left coronary artery is going to branch off and form circumflex artery, which will kind of go back to the posterior side of the heart. As you can see, it's right here. And the other branch of the left coronary artery is this main one, the left anterior descending artery right here. That's the main one. And you can see it branches off to even smaller arteries, right? Okay. Now, this is the one that I want you to remember. So I'm going to use a different color. Let's use purple. This is the main one that I want you to remember because this left anterior descending artery is supplying blood to the left ventricle, to the cardiac muscle of the left ventricle. And remember, the left ventricle is the main chamber that pumps blood to the entire body. So if this blood vessel is blocked, is blocked, without oxygen, the cardiac muscle is going to die really quickly. Right? Your, your uh, brain cells and your cardiac muscle cells, those cells work really hard. They have a very high energy demand. If they don't get oxygen, they can't use oxygen to generate energy from glucose. Right? So without, an, without oxygen, no energy supply, and those cells will die pretty fast, will die fast. So if this main artery is blocked, then the myocardium of the left ventricle is not going to get enough oxygen, and the cells are going to die, and the person is going to experience a heart attack. I have a friend who was recently diagnosed with 80% blockage in the left anterior descending artery. So they had a, um, have a procedure to put uh, a little uh, kind of device in, or in the artery to kind of open it up to allow blood flow. Okay. So I made the, this chart, like I said earlier, to kind of uh, give you a general idea of the pathway of the blood flow in the, in the coronary circuit. So you can see, you know, after the left coronary artery, you have these two main arteries, right? And I kind of highlighted this one because this is the most important one. If it's blocked, then you are in trouble. And these arteries will send the blood to all the tissues in the heart, tissues here, and then tissues uh, do gastric exchange, right? And then the veins will drain the deoxygenated blood to coronary sinus, which is connected to the right atrium. Okay? And that's the main one. Now, it has different names. Some textbooks call it anterior interventricular artery. Some textbooks call it anterior descending artery. Right, so make sure you know all the different names for this particular artery. All right, now let's look at some practice problems. Number one, which of the following valves prevents backflow of blood from the right ventricle into the right atrium? So if you need more time to think about the question, just pause the video before I review the answer. If you have your answer now, then that's great because I'm going to uh, tell you what the correct answer is. Now it's on the right side, right? It is between the atrium and the ventricle. So it's one of the AV valves, right? And on the right side, that's going to be tricuspid, right? The bicuspid, the mitral, those are the same. Those are the same valve and they are on the left side, right, between the uh, atrium and the ventricle. Number three, which of the following arteries supplies the heart with the blood? So that's going to be coronary, right, coronary arteries. So you have a right coronary artery and you have a left coronary artery. 